When I say the words Indiana Jones movie poster, what do you picture? I'm willing to bet you're picturing this, the one sheet for Raiders of the Lost Ark. This artwork by American illustrator Richard Amsel was later used for the majority of box sets for the Indiana Jones films, including the Blu-ray and 4K releases. What you might not know is that this isn't actually the first poster released for Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is the poster for the 1982 theatrical re-release. Raiders of the Lost Ark was originally released to theaters in 1981 and featured this rather subdued one-sheet design by Richard Amsel, focusing mainly on the rising star power of Harrison Ford. So why did they make another poster for the re-release? Apparently they wanted to have more of a focus on the action and adventure aspects of the film, along with some of the other characters. And so, Amsel got another crack at designing a movie poster for one of the greatest films ever made. Two great posters for one great film. I wonder if that'll work for the sequel. Welcome to Paper and Light. My name is Jonathan, and this is a YouTube channel about movies and movie posters. I've been collecting posters for over 20 years, and with each episode, I like to feature one poster from my collection. We're gonna analyze it, talk about the film itself and the physical media releases over the years. As you might imagine, my collection has gotten rather out of hand over the past 20 years or so, so I always end up giving an item away with each of these episodes. Sometimes several items. <laughs> So after the massive success of Raiders of the Lost Ark, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas immediately began work on a sequel. Lucas wanted something bolder, wilder, and darker. Emphasis on the darkness. George had one main idea. He said, look, it's gonna be a very, very dark film. The way Empire Strikes Back was the dark second act of this first trilogy, he wanted the second indie film to be much darker. The original title was Indiana Jones and the Temple of Death. Raiders of the Lost Ark screenwriter Lawrence Kasdan walked away from this sequel, stating that the story George Lucas had come up with was too ugly and mean-spirited. We decided to go darker. Uh, part of it, I guess, was I was going through a divorce at the time and I wasn't in a good mood. The first poster released was a teaser poster featuring a photo of Harrison Ford alone. The tagline was fairly nonsensical and the release date text was difficult to read, so these elements were cleaned up and a second teaser poster was released. For the main US one-sheet poster, Paramount turned to artist Bruce Wolfe, who began his creative process by doing sketches of Harrison Ford based on production set photos. These production photos were later used for other promotional materials like trading cards, calendars, movie magazines, and the children's read-along storybook. Horrified, they watched as the high priest, Mola Ram, lowered a man into boiling lava. Bruce Wolf zeroed in on Indiana Jones as this solitary, heroic figure. He's ready for anything that's coming out of this Temple of Doom. The tagline reads, If adventure has a name, it must be. Indiana Jones. When assessing a movie poster like this, I like to give it what I call the art score out of 10. A-R-T, aesthetics, representation, and titillation. All the key ingredients for making a truly great movie poster. For aesthetics, we're asking how good is the design? How pleasing is the topography, the overall visuals, and the vibe of the poster? Basically, is this poster nice to look at? With its dynamic colors and beautiful mix of light and shadow, I think this poster makes a really dramatic impression. Harrison Ford actually suffered a herniated disc in his back while filming a fight sequence for this movie. And I almost feel like this poster kind of reflects that. The way that he's standing proud, shoulders back, confident yet somehow relaxed, almost like he's on pain meds. The topography here is iconic to say the least, leading the eye beautifully up to Indiana Jones himself. It somehow feels both vintage and fresh in the 1980s, hearkening back to those old film serials of the 1950s. Overall, I think Bruce Wolf brought an amazing sense of depth to this poster. For aesthetics, I'm giving this poster a 3 out of 3. R is for representation. Does it represent the film very well? Does it match the look and feel and the ideas it's presenting? Is there a sense of story? This is tricky because I feel like this poster really does represent certain aspects of the film, but not all of them. For starters, it's incredibly dark. It's full of inky blacks and vines on pillars that could be confused for snakes and insects. George Lucas wanted a darker tone, and this poster certainly delivers that. 
Speaking of Lucas, look at him here, next to Harrison Ford. Look at this dapper gent in his cool VistaVision t-shirt. But a solitary Indiana Jones does not fully represent this film. Throughout the course of Temple of Doom, Indy doesn't really do that much by himself. He steals some sacred stones, throws a rock at the Nazi pilot from Raiders of the Lost Ark, and takes a break in the local Doom Spa. But that's about it. The rest of the runtime, he's with his love interest Willie, or his sidekick Short Round. Vietnamese actor Ki Hu Quan played Short Round, and this was his acting debut. You ready to go? Ready to go. He went on to appear in other classics like The Goonies and Encino Man before virtually disappearing from the screen for several decades. Then, in 2023, he won an Oscar for his role in Everything Everywhere All at Once. To all of you out there, please keep your dreams alive. Willie Scott was played by Kate Capshaw, who went on to marry director Steven Spielberg. In an early draft of the script for Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Indiana revealed what happened to Willie, stating, Last I heard, she married some big shot film director. And so even though Indiana Jones wound up getting the girl, I really did. For representation, I'm giving this poster a two out of three. T is for titillation. Does this poster inspire any excitement or intrigue? Does it make us want to go watch this movie? Raiders of the Lost Ark was absolutely amazing. The promise of more of that would be extremely titillating to anyone who saw Raiders of the Lost Ark, which was most people at the time. This artwork of Indiana Jones is also just plain exciting. There's a lot of promise to it. The promise of a dark adventure and some heroics from a known and beloved character. That's all the promise most people needed as Temple of Doom became a massive hit upon release. For titillation, I'm giving this poster a three out of three. So with a current art score of eight out of 10, this is an all time classic movie poster. But I've reserved that final point for my wife. What did she think? Oh, I really like this one. Good crotch shot, I don't know. Good chest, nice sword. <laughs> okay, with a final art score of nine out of 10, more like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Boom. But not everyone thought so back in 1984. After Temple of Doom was released, there was considerable backlash from parents about the dark, evil nature of some of the scenes in the film. It was too gross. It's just too much violence and gore. And if I were 10 years old and saw it, I would have nightmares probably for a year. Paramount wanted another poster, something brighter, more adventurous, more fun. And they turned to someone who would become synonymous with Indiana Jones artwork, poster artist Drew Struzan. They had another artist do the painting, and I don't know his circumstance, and they opened with his poster, but within that first week, they called me and they just wanted to try something else for whatever reason. Struzan was given very little time to create this poster. He hadn't even seen the film yet. The results are a beautiful montage featuring Struzan's signature portrait work. The colors pop and the entire composition is dynamic and playful. So once again, we have two great posters for one great film. The Struzan artwork was used for the Laserdisc and VHS releases, while the Bruce Wolf artwork was used for the vinyl soundtrack, novelization, and DVD release of the film. This was ultimately the only movie poster that Bruce Wolf ever created, as he worked for the rest of his life as a renowned sculptor and art professor. He sadly passed away in 2022 and leaves behind a true legacy of creativity. Good art makes you feel, and this poster makes me feel like I'm part of a special club. When I was a kid, this was one of those movies that most other kids were not allowed to watch, and for some reason, I was, and I loved it. There's the raft drop, spikes, the minecar sequence, the bridge collapse, blood drinking, and the fact that Indy risks his life not just for a prized artifact, but to save a bunch of children in slavery. You can make the argument that this movie has a lot of cultural problems, and I do not disagree. But also, seeing these children reunited with their parents at the end is beautiful. It is far from perfect, but I would still call it great. This one feels like my own personal Indiana Jones movie. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into the black sheep of the Indiana Jones family. If you want to find out what Temple of Doom stuff I'm going to be giving away, go check out my Patreon below. I hope I've earned your like and consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. Thanks everyone. Can't wait to show you more.